please uh, be quiet as you move as you move out. Thank you. We're on item eight I one. <coughs> Item one, I one is to adopt a resolution in support of the Space Preservation Act and the Space Preservation Ooh. Treaty to permanently ban space-based weapons. And we have 15 speakers for this item. Councilman Beckles, would you like to introduce this? I would. Um, yeah. You know, I think that uh, what I'd, I'd like to do is just kind of re rehash uh, the statement of this issue. Um, for those who don't have uh, have the agenda in front of them and the city of Richmond uh, is a welcoming and safe area For all of our residents. We have been uh, led the way in so many initiatives that uh, that uh, protect and and provide the rights for all of our residents to 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 feel no, safe like um, And so it's imperative that Richmond adopt this resolution an effort to stand in solidarity with residents who claim to be under assault with space-based weapons, um, that should be outlawed by the Space Preservation Act. Now, the thing about this is that, you know, we're, we're not trying something new here. It, this, is, <coughs> this is in support of what's already there on the federal level. So we're saying as a council, we support this, uh, this, this, uh, this tree that's already in, in effect, and we also support our residents who are feeling um, uh, uh, attacked by, by certain kinds of weapons. Um, and so the purpose of this resolution is to show support for residents that identify themselves as targeted individuals by supporting the Space Preservation Act and, uh, that's been passed by Congress and Space Preservation Treaty to permanently ban space-based weapons. Now, many targeted individuals believe they've been personally attacked with weaponry that should be outlawed by the Space Preservation Act. Um, some years Not ago, four, um, five, one of the residents who's gonna talk no. now um, met, I met with her, I met with many of them um, to talk about this issue. Um, I've also spoken with our police department, mm -hmm. um, uh, the representative that. from the department was Cap Captain Gagan, to, to, to figure out how, how law enforcement can we'll support see, we'll see. Um, these individuals. Uh, first of all, by at least listening and not assuming, <laughs> um, and and um, and, and actually just take taking shower. reports of, no of incidences uh, that are reported, and the police department was 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 open to that and is open to that, and are willing to work with our residents and helping them to feel safe because it's important that all, we all feel safe living in our city. Um, so in our city, we put forth our best effort to listen and respect the voices and wisdom of exp and experiences of our residents. And so I, I don't intend to ignore it, and I'm, and I'm hoping that my colleagues on this dais won't ignore, uh, but support those who suspect they have been exposed to these types of uh, inhumane attacks with the intent to cause them uh, uh, great emotional and bodily harm. Uh, and I'm encouraged by these, these residents, these citizens of Richmond who stood up to protect other residents here. And I'd like to uh, encourage other officials at the local, the state and national level to explore methods to expand support to all residents. And as many, as you can see, those of us with an agenda in front of us and those who don't have an agenda in front of you who may be watching um, or, or the live cast on the web is that there is no financial impact to this. This is, this is not going to cost us anything, uh, and it's not going to hurt anyone to pass it, but it certainly would continue to cause emotional distress to those who are being targeted if we don't pass this, and I urge you to support all of our residents in the city. Um, do we have questions from council members? Okay, Vice Mayor. Just real quickly, you mentioned that this was passed by Congress. I'm, yeah. I'm, are you, can you tell me when that happened? Because I'm, I'm trying to look it up now. I thought that this was just um, introduced in 2001, yeah, never was. Yeah, what, what was uh, actually, uh, Ms. Ms. Anderson can probably answer that question. When was it passed at the uh, at the federal level, Ms. Ms. Anderson? Um, 9, 10, 10 2002. Okay. It's the Space Preservation Act. And Congress, former Congressman, uh, Dennis Kucinich had introduced oh. this bill. We're, what was that we're sort of getting out of our of our uh, process here. I think. Uh, uh, why don't you, you have other questions? Oh well, no. I'm looking at the sheet that you're looking at. It looks like that's when the Berkeley City Council passed um, the resolution. 
um, not when Congress passed the law. I'm looking online at the House website, and I know that there's, uh, I understand there's been multiple versions of this bill, so I don't know if it's been passed or not, but, um, but, but from what it looks like here, it doesn't look like that version was passed, was, was passed by Congress, so I don't know if it was, but I understand the Berkeley City Council passed it on 910 of 2002. Yes. Other, other questions from the Council? Um, so I, I had a couple of questions. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the, um, at the resolution, and it talks about the Space Preservation Act. Uh, can you tell me exactly what act that was? Police said they got a 911 call during the robbery saying uh, the suspect it was, never, was armed there's with never a There's never been a space preservation act passed, right? Okay. It wasn't passed. It, it, it just brought forward by, by the, uh, the representative. At the time, um, because there were some, you know, you know how, how it goes in, 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 uh, you know, in Washington. There's just a lot of power play, so it never got, but it did get passed in 2002 uh, in Berkeley. Um, so, so we're, we're, we're making ours uh, similar to, to the one that was passed in Berkeley. Well, it doesn't it's say anything about Berkeley on here. All it says is the Space Preservation Act. Right. So right. Are you talking about the resolution of Berkeley passed? Or are you talking about uh, one of the two uh, resolutions that uh, uh, represented the when the incident happened? Uh, <laughs> well, because that one didn't pass, we were just making reference that um, that it was uh, brought forward by uh, the Senate, and of course, politics being the way they are, it, it did not pass. Uh, so this is this is I'm making reference to and, and using the Berkeley model. Uh, as, as an example, which, uh, which, which one of the consents <laughs> resolutions did the people make the House Resolution 3616. I didn't hear the word. House Resolution 3616. Okay, now from the research I did on this, so long as the that resolution was substantially different than Islamic. Uh, HR 2977 yes, and significantly it omitted any reference to chemtrails, particle beams, electromagnetic radiation, plasmas, extremely low frequency or ultra high frequency energy radiation and mind control technology. So the question I have is it seemed to me that it was your intent to include all these in it, right? So if you go if you go with HR 3616 and we approve this, it will not include any of those things I made. You say something to somebody. Is that your intent? That, 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 was, that was not my, my intent. And you know, I don't want to do any staff to help to help put this together. Between going um, after the terrorists, because we know that this, we because we get help with our staff. Um, the intention was to no to include all of the things the that people are feeling. Um, yeah, that, that, that people are feeling, uh, feeling the pressures of, and feeling the the attacks of. And so I think that. You know, I don't, I don't know how much of this, uh, of that issue that Berkeley had with theirs, um, but I think that to, to include this, as, and this is the resolution that's saying that we support these, these, um, this, this treaty, this act, um, then I, I'd like to have it in there because, again, to me it's important that we, that, that we defend, that we support, and we protect uh, our residents. And so uh, if, if these are the things that residents are saying they're feeling, uh, then, then, then well, all Berkeley did, well, I'm, I'm looking at the Berkeley resolution, and it just says, uh, is the will of the council of the city of Berkeley and the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives an act that the U.S. President signed and enforced the Space Preservation, the Space Preservation Act. But I'm confused because there were actually two Space Preservation Acts introduced, and I think if we're going to get this right, we need to define which one. 
Eagles. Can I support the Because they're different. Working, living. Like you're, you're absolutely right, and, and I want the best one to move forward as well, and I'm sure that the residents want the best one. And so, if, which to me, the, 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 the best one would include all of HR 29. Yeah, which, which is the one? Uh, that would be HR 29. Yes. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, uh, I don't have any other council to uh, council member because there's nothing so I got to watch for it. Okay, uh, council member Martinez and council member McLaughlin. Unleash the power of dough. Keep it a pie. It's always worth remembering. Uh, change the language to say that we, uh, is, uh, is a privilege. Uh, endorse the intent of the act since the act is not actually uh, in place. Keep it the intent of which act? The, the intent of the second act. The second one is, is HR uh, 361. Choose from any of our select Nissan certifieds and get a 450 dollar bonus. Every Lancaster Nissan that's my reading. Is that what you're saying now, Councilman? Of the revision of Getting burned on the road. Okay, Councilman McLaughlin. Medical bills, law three. Currently, Representative Kucinich didn't read fully the first resolution that was brought forward in his name. He brought it forward based on some recommendations and then um, when he realized that it was drawn out to the level that it was, he uh, pulled it. And he brought forward the second one, which is 3616, which I think is, is more general. Um, many of us remember, just to share some uh, input going back, many of us remember in the 80s, Ronald Reagan put forward the Strategic Defense Initiative, which was later dubbed Star Wars. You know, that, that's where this all came from. Um, basically, it was to put weapons technology in space um, as a global shield, as a supposed de defense against China and the Soviet Union. Um, it was later, see, this was seen as in infeasible. I mean, many, other, many people saw this as the idea of putting weapons in space as insane, and I happen to think that it, it, it was a crazy idea, as did the population. At large. Then the Clinton administration in 1993 morphed it um, into the uh, ballistic missile defense later in 2002, which is currently now the Missile Defense Agency. But also along the way in 2002, Dennis Kucinich introduced this bill, and it's the second one that he um, fully introduced, 3616, which basically called for a ban on space-based weapons. And um, then it was, I think it was just introduced, um, a co-sponsor was Representative Barbara Lee, and um, at a certain point, this Space Preservation Act that was just introduced was brought to the UN, um, and a uh, Space Preservation Treaty was linked with it, and actually the UN had previously um, addressed, uh, set up, uh, established, I guess, the basis for this treaty um, by saying that they wanted a permanent ban on space-based weapons that passed in the United Nations by 156 to zero. Um, then Berkeley supported the 2002 um, Space Preservation Act and I believe also the Space Preservation Treaty. So that's what um, uh, Council Member Beckles is referring to in terms of the uh, resolution that she's brought forward. I don't see how anyone could not support not having weapons in space when it's clearly been supported by the UN and also been supported, uh, been clearly stated by um, by many experts that it's infeasible, this original Ronald Reagan plan to uh, dubbed as Star Wars. Um, I think the resolution is fine as it is. It basically says, you know, the residents, the well-being of our residents is of importance to us. 
Let's talk about and the it also, um, you know, it doesn't, um, you know, state pro or con in terms of what um, individuals are saying, but it just refers to the fact that our residents deserve, um, you know, uh, to be protected, and in general, it states that space-based weapons is something that the city of Richmond does not support. Beautiful weather for the week ahead. Boy, it's very, very Amy mild. Anderson. Monica begins yes, at sundown um, tonight. Temperatures so for the rest of the week. Come to the the podium podium over here, so please. this stretch of mild weather, like we showed you that uh, nationwide temperature map, it's not going anywhere for the month of December. We haven't really been spoiled. We have been, and we're hard pressed to get any snow. I don't think we're going to see any for the holidays, but we'll keep you posted. Snow lovers, that's a hard one to spoil. It is, yeah. To all right, well, I'm okay with it. I really Thanks very much. To business news now, and see if you can get any had a look ahead of the week on Wall Street. Facebook. And I the saw why he was in an office and a bill that had extended funding in five on Friday. If a broad budget agreement can't be reached, another extension will be needed to avoid a government that, shutdown. I Call want to thank you first the and economic second, calendar is quiet. as a psychologist, a child psychologist. I want to thank you for putting up with some of those unbearable pains. I suffered along this way. Retail sales figures were lower than the last three days. So only three big companies have been able to get a lot of schedule for the week. Costco, Walmart, Sears, Walmart, 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 Walmart,
what we have discovered is that there are hot pockets within the United States where there are victims that are being exposed to these type of technologies. And as our speakers continue to speak, they will explain to you how that has developed. Currently, the hotspots are New York, Florida, Chicago, Texas, and California. Unfortunately, in California, the East Bay has the highest amount of victims that we have collected on our database within our study within our organization. This is why we are trying to figure out this. But the Blue Jackets score early. Nick Kalino off the Nick. Dr. John Hall. The Flyers would get on the board. Michael Raffle makes it two to one. Dr. John Hall. Going on for the four to one victory. The Capitals on a six game win streak. Dr. Hall's unable to reach right now, so we have Dr. Bruce Spencer. Breaks out early in this one. The Caps would tie things up in the second period. Nicholas back to the first period. Thank you, Sean. But in overtime, with time running down, it's Mark Shockley. Attacking. It's a very difficult problem. And uh, there are a lot of people around the world, especially in Europe, who I attended a council uh, just recently in November. Uh, I'm a retired neurologist. I attended Stanford the University, Yale University, and San Francisco. Uh, I've studied this sort of problem for a period of time, and it's been a mystery to me why medicine in general does not approach this and, and study the multitude of documents that are out there. This is the case. I won't answer this for you because it's an ongoing study, ongoing problem. Uh, this is really a uh, intense technology, essentially uh, what might be described as dehydrodyning, that the entire electrical activity of the human brain can be captured in this uh, supercomputer and certainly processed and then put back into someone else. I mean, it's science fiction, but it's not, unfortunately, it's not science fiction. So naturally, this is difficult. So this is, uh, the technology is incredible, but basically this is a moral problem, ethical problem. This is a violation of the golden rule. This is a major I'm thing to consider. It's also a, con a violation seat, of our I'm constitutional I'm rights. Joe. So and that's an, an important it thing are. to keep in mind. About lost uh, and, I, and to bring it back down to Richmond, I know there are a lot of targeted individuals here and police encounter them. And I can't you understand this result. The medical community uh, is hobbled by not having a differential diagnosis. And many of the psychiatric disorders, they should say, rule out psychotronic illness or disorder. But they don't. So they can't face it. Thank you. In college, let the cheer begin. All right, let's go. Thank you all for your endurance this holiday. Ford, America's best Talk really fast with two minutes to go. Uh, I'm a psychologist. I have uh, yeah, evaluated many targeted individuals who have previously been diagnosed as delusional and psychotic. And, uh, my job is to construct those diagnoses because of the uh, methods of my calling. They can actually detect advanced nanotechnology uh, present in our bodies because of the frequency emissions and uh, lymphatic uh, Basically, like when you fire a bullet to the trajectory, the police can determine the trajectory. There are chemical tests to do that. We're just going very quickly since it's two minutes. This is this month's issue of Smithsonian Magazine, which says the future is here. Brain to brain communication is real. Target individuals report synthetic telepathy, voices in their skull, people putting thoughts in their heads, things that up until now we've been told are complete delusion and lock them up. But you know what? The capability is exist. This is the National Nanotech Initiative, the last 15 years budgets of a billion and a half dollars just by the federal government, non-black budgets. We don't know what they spend on black budgets. Um, doing experimental programs showing how nanosensors and people can give us much more data about humanities technology these can be used for great good, but they have apparently also been Let's used for tremendous evil and non-consensual human experimentation. There is great documentation on this. I do think it's a little unfortunate that you 
confusion about the Space Preservation Act. Um, there are these systems scattered. They're called the acronym stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Systems. They include a component of satellite communication from Central Command Post, as well as components inside the human beings who are targeted individuals. So although there is a component of these weapon systems, and they are clearly weapon systems by the major nations on Earth, there's an arms race on for the mind at this time. Control of the human mind. The Human Brain Initiative is part of it. Uh, if I only have two minutes, I have to stop there. Uh, I hope you will listen to these people. They are suffering greatly as non consensual um, experiments. A question really quickly to the speaker. Could you repeat the names of those uh, two references that you, you gave in the magazine? Can you name of those again, please? But something bad's happened in your family. The uh, first one, the current so, issue of the Smithsonian Magazine, the mainstream magazine, which uh, in this month's issue says communicating brain to brain, and this is merely what they are releasing publicly. The majority of the most advanced weapon systems are classified, and we don't know the full capabilities. This is just the supplement for the president's budget. This year is about the National Nanotechnology Initiative. What I didn't get to say in my two minutes is the National Registry of Environmental Professionals, uh, which certifies people to do all kinds of environmental quality testing, has just certified SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Administration Systems, as something that needs to be studied for its environmental impact on, human being, uh, on the environment in general. And I am part of the H SCADA task force, how these SCADA systems are impacting human beings. There are thousands of reports from targeted individuals that these crimes are being committed against them. And my intention coming here tonight was to support their claims so that law enforcement uh, with as much support from... I, I think she asked you the name of the magazine, so... Yeah, I was so really thank, thank you very much. Lisa Becker. Yes, I have you need to do if you're out and about early. We have dense fog around the area. Hi, good evening. My name is Lisa Becker. I am from Racine, Wisconsin. I've been a victim of this technology for 14 years. I have been tortured for 14 years. My Justice Department has failed me. My executive branch has failed me. My senators have failed me. My Congress have failed me. You are the only people in this country who have the courage to even put this on the agenda. That's why I flew all this way to thank you, to address you. This is torture, and it is enslavement. And one of these people can tell you the same thing. Quickly again, I've suffered desperately. I'm sorry if I'm emotional. I'm very tired. But if you won't save us, save yourselves. Because I promise you, this will come back to everyone. Every one of us in this country are going to be tapped into these computer systems. And you're going to see what this feels like. Do something now or still can't. I'm going to say he's not a suspect in the mass shooting. Next round, and why they've got the Tufaruk and his wife Tashfi Malik. ISIS has called a couple supporters, but would not claim responsibility for the attack. We know that ISIL and other terrorist groups are actively encouraging people around the world and in our country to commit terrible acts of violence. Oftentimes, as honorable things. Sure. Well, I have actual photographs of burns on my body. When I went to my doctor, um, the response was, how do I know you didn't do that to yourself? How do you even address that? I've passed two psychological evaluations. Not one, but two. The one physician said, you're mentally sound as a bell. He said, I don't have any idea what's going on. When I go to sleep, when I go to try to sleep, I feel like I'm being lit up like a Christmas tree. I feel every cell in my body just bouncing out of my body. I can't even describe it. I get uh, electric shock up my rectum. I get electric shock up my nose. I've woken up with burns on the end of my tongue. I've had burns on the palms of both my hands. I vibrate. 
Our next speaker is Derek Robinson, followed by LaQuisha Baker, Dolores Hall, Kim, Alex, Elizabeth Adams, Robert Swift. Please come forward. A traffic advisory this morning for drivers in Johnson County. The Interstate 283 North Ramp to Interstate 83 South in Spadera Township is closed to traffic this weekend. Um, that ramp runs under U.S. Route 322, rather, where uh, director of the Human Rights Group Conference is expected to reopen tomorrow at 5 a.m. In regards to the Space Preservation Act uh, resolution that's before you, many of us have traveled here today to say thank you very much for listening and responding. And so many and the music photo uh, journalist Kyle Ashton uh, over the past couple of years. Um, this is a month of anticipation for our organization and for humanity. We have an extraordinary You're one of the very few governing authorities that have the conservative the Research in this area has been ongoing. Music, 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 but only since the arrival of the internet has uh, this holocaust been made known to thousands of people who have found that they are victims of psychotronic technology. And that they have been surreptitiously uh, victimized by them. And as the devices proliferate and the public becomes more aware of these covert activities, legislation on a local and national level to address the concerns with regard to a vulnerable society. Your resolution today is to be a giant step forward in ensuring the health Get your scratch off card in the mail or in the store. Then reveal discounts of 40. Lucretia Baker. Even 50%. Plus, save more with in store coupons. And get one year no interest financing. No minimum, nothing no at all. So go the scratch new furniture off your list. Instead, save just 50%. It's now for Monday only. And I've been a Richmond resident for 40 plus. Some financial problems are on the I've seen two of my drivers, friends try to fight credit card debt. debt. Their bodies the are gone. No coming back. My mother, a black panther, they killed her. She was in the Where your comfort comes first. After all, you're not looking for a place to stay. You're 
Don't give credit to the opponent. Come on, Valley Central Dolphin. You can hardly expect anything less from a game than a game like this. That game was just a bit less physically exhausting to watch than it was to play in. And now, after outlasting their mid Penn Commonwealth arch rivals, Cumberland Valley rumbles into next Saturday State Farm A semifinals against Pittsburgh Central Catholic in Altoona. At Hershey Park Stadium, Pat Principe, In health news this morning, a major study suggests that false positive results from mammograms may not be quite so false after all, and it could be an early indicator of future cancer. NBC's Erica Edwards explains. When a mammogram picks up a suspicious area on a woman's breast, she undergoes further testing, sometimes a biopsy, to find out if it's really cancer. If it's not, it's called a false positive. Now, a large much. study suggests some of those false positives may be an extremely early warning sign of cancer that will someday grow. Having a false positive is really a piece to the puzzle of breast cancer risk. Dr. Louise Anderson of the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill led the 15-year study of more than for bringing women. this topic forward Those and bringing some of these speakers. Um, I urge you to adopt this resolution. As has been said, the Experts regional space uh, preservation act was introduced by Congressman Kucinich, co-sponsored by uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee and Congressman Pete Stark in the Bay Area. And um, this does not. This concept was also voted on and supported unanimously by the United Nations to prohibit uh, weaponization of space and space-based weapons. Uh, these are clearly not good for anyone on Earth and not good for anyone in Richmond. We do have to be aware that there are a lot of exotic weapons research programs going on, some of them covert, some of them not covert. Uh, a former Richmond resident sent me a lot of emails last year about um, a public comment period for allowing uh, U.S. military testing of directed energy weapons in the Olympic Peninsula in the state of Washington, which is a great concern. Um, in terms of the types of weapons that are affecting these individuals, uh, before you judge the targeted individuals, I would suggest that you listen to them, take the time to really listen deeply to their experience, try to put yourself in their shoes for a moment. If you uh, can believe them, then please do what you can to support them. If you're not sure, then I urge you to take the precautionary principle, when in doubt, err on the side of extra protection for those who are vulnerable. So please do adopt this resolution. Thank you. Sylvia Gray White. So, if you're looking for unique, heirloom quality furniture for your home, stop in and see us at AFC. From sofas and beds to decorative mirrors and vases, you'll find it at AFC. Explore at afcshop.com. There's no comfort but the comfort of home. My name is Sylvia Gray White, a very long time Richmond resident. Tonight I'm so thankful and happy that our city is looking up, waking up, and standing up. Approval of this agenda item will make an impact on the whole world and will help us to restore our mother earth and our health. The heavy metal toxins falling down on us daily from the chemtrails are done by our military without our approval and knowledge. Lead is one of the many chemicals in the chemtrails, even though the government banned it decades ago. And it's from paint, toys, even bullets, and other manufacturing process. This toxin has really negatively impacted my life. Lead is very toxic, and there are no safe levels. It displaces the calcium in your bones, among many other illnesses, particularly with the children. The level of lead in my body was, has drastically increased in the past three years. I gotta get the lead out. We need to stop this constant daily abuse of our universal rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you don't feel good, you can't feel good. I am not the only one who can this pollution. If you breathe, you're breathing it too. We have rights. Stand up for them. Now I'm understanding how to use a cane, at the same time giving but I still can stand and breaks. will stand up Music for what's right. Our last speaker is Elizabeth Adams. She knows the rules. That's right. I'm parking. That's a ticket. She was 
late for class and was supposed First to park in the student I'd ladder like on the corner. It was full. Pass the cell phone around. This is what line. electronic this was burns oh, look like. Yeah. This is my yeah. six-year-old yeah. granddaughter yeah. who has been it's targeted the first time since she's gotten a ticket on so campus. Can I just walk and her timing to you? couldn't be better. Campus security is doing food for fun. They will give her a $20 ticket in exchange for 10 cans of food. That's great. Ashley got a deal at the grocery store and gave 12. But I was like, here you go. And then my file was immediately erased. That's what we hear so great. of the victim speak of uh, uh, being electronically. The donations or payments in this case will that go to the community covered of Elizabethtown. The school I am, is collecting uh, any non-perishables for violators between November 1st and December 11th. It says during that time last year, about $5,000 worth of tickets were paid. I want to say that I thank God for the food pantry. And like Mr. County and I mean literally from the bottom of the my heart, I thank him for, for each one of you. About a place that I thank God for the blessings that he's going to bring your way just for addressing these issues. This, these issues are beyond... <coughs> the average eye. The average eye can't even see it. So it's not even worth even talking about in that sense. I have sent each and every one of you information. Everything that I sent you is just what you need to know. But there's one more thing left. Your local fusion center. You need to do some deep research into your local fusion center. Just look it up online. That is where you will find information, uh, ill activities of some sort that is going on within, I'm not going to say city government because I can't pinpoint it, but you need to look into your local fusion center. Secondly, mental health of children. May I finish just two minutes, please? Uh, I, I think like we can make your own rice. Okay. Thank you. Super Doppler 8, not much to show you around the region. We have dry that conditions so nice due to high pressure dominating. High pressure will sit right on top of us today and tomorrow, bringing us the sunny skies. Just a few weeks ago, you know, if you didn't week. sign up, you can't see me. Okay, I have a nice day. As it drifts offshore, clockwise flow around that high will drift slowly with us the region. The uh, weaponization of space has been, has, has been in the history that was described uh, so eloquently by Councilman McLaughlin as something that I think is extremely immoral and should not be um, as a nation engaging in, and so I'm going to support this resolution. <laughs> I'm sure you just have to For today, we should touch the 50 yeah, degree mark speakers. for the first time this weekend. As we head into okay. tonight, temperatures Hearing will drop back down to uh, 30 yeah, with that fog redeveloping. Tomorrow, temperatures yeah, soar yeah, once again. I think low 50s are yeah, a good bet for us. Okay, now we'll yeah, cool down with a few more clouds uh, by midweek. We'll head right back up there to the upper 50 at the end of the week. No motion of second. We can't handle it. Really, no cold air coming our way for snow lovers. This is a big bummer because we don't have any snow lovers. I just want to address for a second this whole idea about weaponizing of space and the seems to be this assumption that just because um, not much we can do about it. you are not really well, we star loss and so it's automatically become some unmitigated well, uh, the, the context in which it was considered a problem it's a TV show was that serves simply the Latino because population of, of Lancaster. Once you know, at the uh, there was this perception that uh, Star Wars or any kind of Strategic defense initiative helping could others, be, especially those with um, English as their second language, is important be to Cynthia. Especially the female and the opponents, particularly a very well armed opponent like the She Soviet moved here 15 Union. years ago from Ecuador and opened her own business. But it didn't come easy. We have nothing. We have to serve them at any one point. She believed so in the American dream and was impossible to make her happy. To intercept all of them and to distinguish the nuclear missiles from the dummy missiles. And, and, Along and with her the husband, understanding was companies. that it would be insurance uh, firm based right in the city, that making there could be a problem to in need. created so because uh, uh, based be on kind of the overestimation of the effectiveness of Star Wars, means also helping others, namely that America might think that it was still effective and therefore 
go for a first strike and knock out all the Soviet weapons. Or, on the other hand, the Soviets might feel it was too effective and go for a preemptive strike beforehand. It was only in that specific Cold War context that Star Wars was considered a horrible idea. Uh, actually, Star Wars is not a particularly bad idea. The whole idea is that we can knock out someone's weapons before they enter your airspace, in fact, long before they enter your airspace. And this, for example, was uh, practiced more than 20 years ago in the Gulf War when um, the Patriot uh, uh, system, um, you know, a modification of this was used when the Patriot system knocked out some of the Iraqi missiles that were launched at Israel, and, and it is a, not just a perfect valid system, but it is actually a particularly useful system in the time that we have now, uh, where there are nations which are not quite as well armed as the Soviet Union used to be in the 1920s, uh, which may not have the capability to launch the tremendous numbers of missiles at, at any one time. And in fact, this is, um, you know, a fairly useful system to have. And so this automatic knee-jerk reaction that because Reagan, um, you know, supported Star Wars and at the time it was considered a bad idea, uh, so for that purpose it is a bad and an evil idea for forever. I, I just think this is a wrong understanding of the system and, and I just want to uh, mention that. Okay, I have so I, I just, the reason I was interrupting, because I don't think we should get into a, this, that's kind of way off base. I was just giving the history of this. Um, but in general, uh, I will say that there were some of us in the 80s who were talking about um, a nuclear freeze, like to stop the, um, the arms war rather than uh, weapons in space. And, um, you know, I think space should be for exploration and, you know, good things to learn scientifically, not for a weapons race. Wait, uh, we're not having any blank from the audience. Um, Councilmember Martinez. He's turning on the lights. Uh, yes. Just, just last week on 60 Minutes, there was there was a uh, special on uh, a reintroduction of the arms war with uh, uh, people trying to uh, develop missiles to take out communication satellites. Um, but uh, any kind of war effort is wrong. And we need to do whatever we can to stop all war efforts. Now, uh, when I was in university in, uh, in, in the 1980s, uh, for, for a humanities class, I, uh, I did a, uh, uh, a paper on a science fiction novel. And what I actually did was, was I took all of the predictions in this science fiction novel and then I went to magazines and newspapers, and I was surprised to find that every single prediction in the science fiction novel that was written uh, 20 years earlier had already come true, and they were happening there then in uh, 19, uh, 1980. So, so it's easy for me to see that as many as 13 Things youngsters can claim which are wrong to a nipple for their two can happen because uh, we have the wrong mindset. We are we have the mindset which is a war mindset and this uh, a proposition that was put forth by Kucinich was to change our attitudes towards one of seeking peace. And that's why I'm endorsing it. It is on topic because you know, the, the, I, the debate over Star Wars is, is sort of... Uh,
part of what, what, what initiated this. And, and I think um, uh, uh, what I would say, and it's, it's been said, that any sort of, in my view, um, the idea that we don't have enough tools to kill each other here on Earth, and so that we need to start doing it in space, that just is simply immoral. And, you know, maybe that some wars are unavoidable. That may be true. Um, but uh, whatever we can do to get our, our country to, to move away from that mindset um, and move away from um, utilizing new methods of war, um, we should support. So that's why I support this resolution. Okay, well, let me, I, I think he's bringing up a good point. I think that this holiday season will continue or start a new family tradition filled with 600,000 spectacular twinkling lights and, of course, Santa. Ho, 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 and a Merry Christmas! Hi, I'm Ron Martin. Now, through December 31st, Park, experience Christmas Man, a festival of lights at Rocky um, Ridge County Park in York County. So, I see that. For more information, go All the testimony I've heard tonight are about targeted individuals. And, um, so, I mean, I'm confused. Is this about space-based weapons, or is it about targeted individuals? And if individuals are targeted, who's targeting them and why? Uh, so I just don't understand it. it, it it's simple enough saying that I mean, and, and on the near, therefore, as you read, we are supporting the, the Space Preservation Act and Companion Space Preservation Treaty. The, the reason we're doing this is to ensure that individuals will not be targets of space-based weapons, which is what they're saying. Like all the, you know, and so that's what we're adopting here. And and you know, I think. You know, whether you believe it or not, um, one thing that was very clear, and I've met with folks uh, a lot around this issue, and so and some of them I'm just hearing tonight, but even the ones that I heard tonight, like, just out of compassion, folks are saying, help us, and you're su us supporting um, this, by, by adopting this resolution, um, you know, I think it, it sends out a message that, you know, we, we, we sympathize with you support you and the very least we can do is just pass this resolution to make sure that you know you feel the support and love and, and sympathy that you know. it's, um, well, look, I, I it's, it's simple it's simple where's the sound out of the speaker's face okay. what you see well, before you is what we're trying to pass so don't I, complicate it it's simple so it. vote it yes or no okay. I sympathize with everyone who is suffering some kind of affliction and um but on the other hand, uh, you know, in 1967, the U.S. adopted or the, the uh, president signed the treaty on the principles governing the activities of states in the exploration and use of outer space, uh, including the moon and other celestial. So the U.S. government has acted on this, and they have and within that particular What the fuck treaty, did he fucking do? Uh, is a ban I don't fucking get it. Using outer space for uh, military purposes. So I'm kind of I'm I just don't know quite I I, don't, I just don't understand what we're talking about. Are we talking about weaponization of space? Or are we talking about the chemtrails? Are we talking Christ, about I'll tell you fucking why you make me sick my fucking stomach? If so, by whom and why? Uh, I mean, this is. You know, I'm just a dumb city council person, and this is just way, way over my head. Uh, and and I, I frankly think it's sort of way out of the purview of what the city council could be taking up, taking up. We've got real problems here. We've got pothole roads. We've got a budget that's out of balance. We've got crime. We've got greenhouse gases. We've got all these things to worry about. And here I'm being asked to support a resolution that uh, it's like chemtrails and particle beams and plasmas and mind control technologies. 
I just don't know enough I'm, about it. If I were the fuckers pissing me off. Take a side, but I'm not. And so for that reason, I'm just not going to support it. Maybe sometime I'll learn more and be more, uh, more oriented. I like to call the question. Councilmember Bates. Well, it is confusing. Um, I'm going to support the uh, resolution for the simple reason that we have voted on a lot of dumb ideas and uh, what uh, this resolution represent. And again, we know that we don't control the universe. We don't control Congress. So uh, this is the least of uh, my worries. So I'm going to support. Now call for the question. Oh, he crashed it. Jesus fucking Christ. You motherfucker. You know, state pro or con in terms of... We should support, so that's why I support this resolution. <laughs> Okay, if there's nobody else, let's vote. Wait, council member can play. Yes, so uh, the motion before us, does that include these things like chemtrails and stuff? Because, or no? Well, let me, I, I think he's bringing up a good point because I'm really confused. I think that, that the uh, resolution itself is very simple. It simply says, the city of Richmond hereby supports the Space Preservation Act and Companion Space Preservation Treaty to ensure that individuals will not be targets of space-based weapons. Um, so I see that. All the testimony I've heard tonight are about targeted individuals. And uh, so, I mean, I'm confused. Is this about space-based weapons or is it about targeted individuals and if individuals are targeted who's targeting them and why well, uh, so I just don't understand it I mean, it, it, it's simple enough it's saying that I mean and, and on the near therefore as you read we are supporting this the space preservation act and companion space preservation treaty the, the reason we're doing this is to ensure that individuals will not be targets of space-based weapons which is what they're saying like all this stuff is is high technology it's you know and so that's what we're adopting here and and you know I think you know whether you believe it or not um, one thing that was very clear and I've met with folks uh, a lot around this issue and so and some of them I'm just hearing tonight but even the ones that I heard tonight like just out of compassion from folks are saying help us and you're su us supporting um, this by, by adopting this resolution um, you know I think it, it sends out a message that you know we, we we sympathize with you we support you and the very least we can do is just pass this resolution to make sure that you know you feel the support and love and 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 sympathy that that you well know, you look I, I it's, sympathize it's it, re it reads okay. right there mayor that's all we're trying to pass okay. what you see well, before you is what we're trying to pass don't, don't I, complicate it it's simple so vote it yes or no I sympathize with everyone who is suffering some kind of affliction, and um, but on the other hand, uh, you know, in 1967, the U.S. adopted or the the uh, president signed the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of States in the Exploration and Use of Outer Space. Uh, including the moon and other celestial bodies. So the U.S. government has acted on this, and they have, and within that particular treaty uh, is a ban on, on oh, so using hacked. outer space well, I'd have for to fucking re uh, military purposes. Four fucking pages. So I'm just kind of, I'm, I just ago, don't know quite, I, I, don't I, don't, I just was don't understand what we're talking about. Are we talking what? about the weaponization of space? Are we talking about chemtrails? Are we talking about individuals who are being targeted? If so, by whom and why? Mayor, uh, that, I mean, this is, 
you know, I'm just a dumb city council person, and this is just way, way over my head. Uh, and and I, I frankly think that it's sort of way out of the purview of what this city council could be taking up, taking up. We've got real problems here. We've got pothole roads. We've got a budget that's out of balance. We've got crime. We've got greenhouse gases. We've got all these things to worry about. And here I'm being asked to support a resolution that deals with uh, deals with things like chemtrails and particle beams and plasmas and mind control technologies. I just don't know enough about it. If I were an expert, I'd probably take a side, but I'm not. And so for that reason, I'm just not going to support it. Maybe sometime I'll learn more and be more uh, more oriented towards like to support. call the question again. Councilmember Bates. Well, it is confusing. Um, I'm going to support the um, resolution for the simple reason that we have voted on a lot of dumb ideas and um, what uh, it, this resolution represents. And again, we know that we don't control the universe. We don't control Congress. So uh, this is the least of um, my worries. So I'm going to support and I'll call for the question. Does anybody else want to talk about it? Okay, let's just vote. Councilman can play? No. No? No. The motion passes no. with Councilman can play voting no and Mayor Butt voting no. Thank you, God. At some point, you'll catch up space. One, one reason I voted for it, that was one speaker in opposition to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the next slide. I think we have one more left. Item J1 <clears throat> is to direct the city manager to work with the city clerk to develop a schedule to make the agenda packet available to the public seven days prior to the city council meeting.